Hey guys, I am here at the exhibit. Hey McFanny at the Mammoths and Mastodon Titans of the Ice Age exhibit. So I am going to go, I hope, I hope the uh, reception is gonna be okay for you. Let me just look, cause it's very dark. Hey Gail, big cheese, thank you. So I'm not sure, how is the reception? Hey Gail, how's the re how's the reception? Is it all right? I hope so. Is it good? Okay. So I am gonna walk around. This is the first time I've been in here. Hey, thanks guys for joining. Thanks for sharing. We were just listening to uh, some guest speakers speak on mammoths and mastodons and the scientific discoveries they've made through DNA sampling, etc. So I'm going to try, I do have a couple of notes for you, but I am going to just look. I'm gonna just have a look, because I have not been to this exhibit. So I'm just going to take a walk with me, guys. Connie said hello, okay. Say hello to Connie. So obviously 20,000 years ago, mammoths roamed the earth they also became extinct around 20,000 years ago. So I'm just seeing this in what they have to, to show us. So I am here, oh, and today, this is what it looks like today, development. So here I'm at the Science Center and I'm looking at their new exhibit. Can't imagine seeing them alive, I know. Antonio, hi everyone. Just missed a few people popping in. If you're watching on the Apple TV at home, enjoy. And if you're just joining, thank you. I'm here at the Science Center, their new exhibit that's opening up tomorrow. <coughs> runs till close to the end of April. Science centers around the world borrow exhibits. And this exhibit came from Chicago from the Field Museum in Chicago and it's all about mammoths and mastodons that existed thousands of years ago. So this might give you an idea the Ice Age which was 2.5 million years I believe. The Colombian uh, mammoth it's here two weeks ago Austin Hall from Chicago so you, I sorry, I didn't catch the name. So you saw the same exhibit then, because the Colombian mammoth is here. So there you go. So these stood about fourteen feet tall. No, not an exhibit. No, okay. I watched his scope too. All right, so I'm not sure. I wish that they had. Okay, Gail, I'll talk to you later. Hope all is well. It's a, a, a dig site in Waco, Texas. Oh, okay. Now, I'm not sure, and I hope the reception stays for me because I'd like to walk around here with you guys. Thanks for everyone who's popped on on the replay and who has popped on to take a walk with me. This is the first time I've been in the exhibit. You can't touch this exhibit. But there isn't like a, a nameplate. So I'm wondering exactly what, like this is, I wish I knew more to tell you about this one piece. You have to check my catch. Okay, Les, I will catch your catch. So Titans of the Ice Age, Colombian mammoth leg bone right here. It's right here, so 
1.6 million to 10,000 years ago. Hey, sweet potato. So a Colombian mammoth leg bone. That's a cow bone. So um, what's this? Over four feet long, weighs 90 pounds. A six foot tall human adult is only about 1.5 feet long and weighs five pounds. So this is four feet long, weighs about 90 pounds. So let's continue on. So guys, I hope, I hope that um, you'll be able to still get reception. Trunks and tusks. Um, so the first of these appeared in Africa about 55 million years ago, guys. And the mammoth is in the same family of the elephant. North Africa, because they ate a lot of vegetation. I'm sorry, this is, I can't even say that name, 37 to 30 million years ago in Africa, one of the earliest Provo Scythians, first signs of a trunk, more like a snout, not a direct ascent, ancestor to the mammoth but rather an ancient relative. All right, so here you go. I guess that's what they're saying. Yeah, right, it looks like that. So what is this? Cast of an early, so this is a cast that was found, well, a cast of the early animal. Because I can't, little ears like a hippo. Yeah, right, I didn't say hippo. So there you go. 37, 30 million years ago. What is this? The trunk performs many functions and is vital to an elephant's survival. <laughs> I thought maybe, it looks like this is for like a kid's thing, right? So I thought it might do something funny for you, but it did not. And here they ask the question, aren't mammoths ancestors of elephants? Well, they're in the same family as elephants. So here's that the guy behind me. So here's that guy behind me. Right over there. <laughs> you find it funny? Okay, and then we're moving up. The woolly, woolly mammoth. 700 to 3,900 years ago. 700,000 to 3,900 years ago. Does that make sense? Now the Colombian mammoth. Oh, I see. I see, it was extinct 10,000 years ago. Maybe that's what it means. 1.6 million is when it thrived, started. Evolution, that's right. Two million, see, hey, come on. I'm learning something, right? The American mastodon to the Colombian mammoth which is a lot bigger. The mastodons I was reading are shorter, stockier type. And this little guy. And then we have the African elephant. Ooh. 
please touch based on fossil skulls. Uh, look inside the nearby display case to see fossils of this guy. Yeah, 14 foot tall and 20,000 pounds. Well, I'm thinking that's what that is, right? Or like there's even more. So just bear with me. I'm going to I'm going to try and touch this thing. That is kind of weird. So So there you go. I've I've touched the hair of the beast. You guys see the hair? There you go. Um, and here's uh, an early jawbone, lower jawbone. So now this, please touch, look, please touch. Like these are huge. Ooh, and look at the job of that. If you watch, if you're watching this on replay, you can always pause and then um, read read the you know the write up. That's probably a good idea too. So here's that lower jaw. So with the DNA that they've found, hey, smartphones, thanks for popping in. So here you go, this is Look at that. The names are so big. <laughs> Tusk and jaw of this creature. Right there. But look at look at what how big they would be. In height. They're huge, guys. Like, look, here's me. Here's me reaching up to touch. Like, it's huge. It's awesome they have things you can touch. And here, I'll just, uh... yeah, they do. They do look like elephants. All right, so this is looking back over evolution and the size and how large. And then we're just gonna walk. I hope the uh, connection is okay, guys. Growing up in the herd, the life of a mammoth once roamed in great numbers across Europe, Northern Asia, and North America. And can science, scientists clone a mammoth? No. Hey Luke, everyone for popping in. Thank you. I'm here at the Ontario Science Centre looking at their mammoth and mastodon exhibit that's going to be opening to the public tomorrow so i get a sneak peek with many other people who are here so here the woolly mammoth 700 to 3900 years ago so it's the evolution of it it is really interesting right the wo woolly mammoths right where they lived ate a lot of grass and other plants, which they can say they did because of the DNA. And they found um, 
mammoth dung in a cave in Utah, they were able to <laughs> analyze it scientifically and found that uh, that's what they ate. So the skull. So no photography, but we're allowed to shoot. So here they talk about, and I'm not sure if I'm saying her name right. My first thoughts. La Yuba. And they found DNA. And so well preserved that they were able to capture quite a bit from it. When she was born, what she ate. They wanted to know how she died. So they found. Look at this. So they found all of this in a cave, and the DNA was so preserved. Here you go. She remained frozen in Siberia's permafrost over many thousands of years. So look. Oh, it's Luba. So look at that. What they found, that's what she looked like. And then they dissected certain parts and they were able to find out, here you go, milk from her mother, the pollen of grass. Yeah, baby. And this is an image of um, her teeth that they were able to get DNA from. So, yeah, it's so interesting. Like in her intestines and everything, right? Like, wow. That's the baby one they found. Saw that on Discovery. Oh, did you, Les? So yeah, so very, very interesting. So with x-rays and CT scans, they were able to look at so much more data. Co yeah, cause of death, health and well-being, amazing. Um, Nanette's people found her in Russia. So this is how they found her. Saw in the distance a small body that looked at first like it could be one of the animals. But as they approached, they realized it was not a trunk. And it was most definitely not a baby. The herder traveled to the nearest town to tell the authorities. And they moved to the local museum as quickly as possible. They named her Luba after the Can you imagine? Except for the loss of most of her fur, she was almost perfectly preserved. It turns out, though, that the mud that enclosed the body contained bacteria. Certain bacteria that were capable of producing the amount of acid that actually took the Wow. Shortly after that, the cold conditions of the body Scientists around the world were excited to hear about her. My first thoughts on seeing her were just the amazement that she was really all there. Well, there you go, guys. That's pretty amazing. Find this baby mammoth. They used high-tech equipment to scan her. I'm sure you can find this online on YouTube, but pretty amazing. Wow. All right, let's keep going. Here is a replica. Yeah, pretty amazing. Here is a replica of Luba. The story we were just listening to. 
So here's a replica of her. So here they're asking the question, where's the, her fur? And it's saying it fell off as she lay in the wet mud after her death. Pretty cool story. What a find. So this again, I am at the Ontario um, Science Centre. And this exhibit was put together by the Field Museum in Chicago. And it's on loan to Toronto, to the Ontario Science Centre until April the 26th. So this, right now, sorry, I, there's glass here. I'm not sure if you can see it. Woolly mammoth tusks. So let's have a look. So this is woolly mammoth tusks. Compared to elephant tusks, they say woolly mammoth tusks are larger and more uh, spiral in form. Adult males measure eight to nine feet in length. The two on display here measure about seven feet long, half of the size of the world record woolly mammoth tusk, a whopping 14 feet long. So here's images. So these seven feet long. And they don't say these are replicas, so um, I hesitate to say that they're real, the real authentic ones, but they don't say replica. So, and again, they have these cute little exhibits for the kids. Can you help the mammoth hold up its tusk? Turn the handle. Turn the handle, okay. See how a, diff a big ligament like a bungee cord helps keep the mammoth skull level. Attach attaching the ligament higher on the skull gives more leverage. Okay, so turn the handle. Oh, turn, turn the handle. I think, I think that's what they wanted. Okay. Yeah, okay. So I, I'm not a kid. So here you go. The ligament shifted upward in mammoths and their ancestors' tusk size is increased. Do you guys understand it? Turn the handle. All right. You know what? As long, Debbie, as long as you understand it, <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> Okay, so let me have a look. What else do we have here? Oh, okay, the Colombian mammoth, right here, guys. I hope the reception is all right. So let's have a, a look. Let me just have a look, quick look here. Should be okay. Awesome. Okay, so let's have a look. cousin of the woolly mammoth, one of the largest ever lived. They stood about 13 to 14 feet at the shoulder. They shared North America habitat with other animals, many now in extinct, and I'm sure many that we're gonna see right here. So let's have a look. So this is where they're found, many parts of North America remains in western and southern United States and as far down as Central America. Okay guys. Okay so I'm looking up at this guy. So it says keep off. But here, let me show you. They found 23 in Waco so far. My gosh. So look. And he's hairy. They've added hair. 
and there is tail. So here, guys, this is, here, I'll put my hand over here. So I'm leaning in. It says to ke please keep off, but it didn't say I couldn't touch. And no one's yelled at me so far. If someone could take a screen grab of that for me and tweet it to me, that would be fantastic at Karen Mancini. Thank you. I saw that. That's such a great shot. Okay, so here are some of the animals that existed when that Colombian mammoth existed. So this is considered, please touch again, this bronze cast was created from the skull of a giant ice age bear. So they existed 1.5 million years ago, up to 12,000 years ago. So this is a cast, a bronze cast from the skull of a giant ice age bear. Well, I wonder what happened to him. Look at his skull. That is pretty cool. Thanks for the hearts. Thanks everyone for popping in and staying around. Oh. Okay, so now we've looked at the skull. So let's look at him. Oops. Sorry. He's huge. Could I go portrait? Yep. Is that better? Wow. Oh, sorry. Did you get that? I just saw the camera. So he's huge, guys. Big fella. And then we have right here the Colombian mammoth. Massive. Can you imagine? It's like 20,000 years ago these guys became extinct. The question is what made them extinct? They're still questioning that. So, so again, this guy is pretty huge, right? This guy is pretty huge. Like, look at my hand here. Um, can I do this? Big boobs. I'm reaching up to touch him. Yeah, he's big. Okay, let's. Okay, so we see the mammoth the bear. Let's look at this guy. Who is this character? And I hope I don't lose you. I hope the connection is okay. Oh yeah. So here, this is the brain, a bronze cast created from the skull of a, yeah. You, you think about that word, tooth cat, found in the caves in Texas. Leishenheim, I think. Not as big as the bear we just saw, but these all existed at the same time period, roamed the land the same time period as these guys did. Sorry. Nope. We're just looking at this guy here. So this is. I can't say his name. A skimitar. 
Skimitar to the cat. Guys, if you want me to go back and look at something, let me know. I'm just going to have a look at this. Woolly mammoth bone and part of the shoulder joint. This, this is part of the shoulder joint. I'm doing great. <laughs> okay. So here you go. How can, how can we tell a mammoth's age? The fusion of epiphyses, that's not how you say it, the ends of the bones to bone shafts occur at predictable times in a mammoth's life. Along with bone size, scientists observe the results of this process to determine an animal's age. So here you go. Mammoth front bone from an adult mammoth and a woolly mammoth front leg bone. So there you go. The colored piece is what we're looking at. Wow. So, male mammoths continue to grow until they were between 30 and 35 years old. This is one reason why males grew to be bigger than females. Here, guys, I'm going to see if I can. Hey! So, here I'm like, can I do this? Oh, no, I can't. There you go. This is behind me, back down to me. <laughs> that wasn't a good selfie. Okay, what's this? Woolly mammoth jaw. 30 year old mammoth. This, well, is another jaw. Each side of the jaw is an adult size fits fit more. Whoa. Okay, guys, look at the teeth. Now, I understand that um, the teeth are flat because of the type of food that they ate, the grass. Aw, oh, thanks, smartphone. <laughs> so you tell you can tell the difference between the teeth, the molars in the uh, mammoths to the molars in the mastodon. So hopefully we'll see the molars in the mastodon, so I can show you the difference. These are flat because of the the grass and that they ate. So right here it says scientists can estimate a mammoth's age by looking at the size of its jaw and teeth. Um, the number of ridges or plates on its teeth and the amount of wear on its teeth. Yeah, the grinding, right? Okay, so... Wow. Um, so as they aged, uh, the molar shifted position from the back to the front. The wear on these teeth and the eruption of a new set of teeth indicated that this jaw belonged to a mammoth between 16 and 18 years old. Interesting, guys. Okay, so what I'm going to do, so this is, hey, look. So how old was that mammoth? Scientists can estimate the size of its jaw and teeth, the number of ridges, the amount of wear and tear on the teeth. So. The two teeth are from two mammoths of different ages, a baby mammoth right there, about five months old, and a juvenile mammoth about six years old is this one. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so these are on loan from the University of Alaska Museum Fairbanks. <laughs> Look at that tooth. Oh my goodness. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around. So this is a jawbone. 
of a mammoth between 18, 16 and 18 years old. I lost a lot of money. You can see. Ugh. Okay, Debbie. Thank you. So this is between 15 and 16 years old. This jawbone, about 60 or 65 years old. Look at the wear and tear on the teeth, right? So this is 15 to 16 years old. Look at the, the big teeth. And this is the jawbone and teeth of 60 to 65 years old. Wow. So guys, again, look at the Colombian mammoth, the bear, the cat over here. We have some other people, the Ontario Museum is scoping for the second time. I was the first time, and this is the second time that they're going to have someone periscoping. They've got, look at the lights that they've got. They've got these, uh, these lights here, fantastic. So we're going to walk over. We're going to walk over here because I want to see. Hey, Mo, thanks for dropping in. I just want to see what this is. Obviously a mammoth. And it looks pretty young because of the teeth. Now that we know about the teeth. You can't hear me? One sec. In an ER. One second. Not sure why you can't hear me. But can see you. So you can't hear me. Hey, how's that? Can you hear me? How is this? Can you guys hear me now? You are in an ER? No, I'm not at the exhibit. Can you guys let me know if you can hear me? Okay, so I'm going to plug in my headphones. You tell me what you think. Okay, so this is without my headphones. And I heard you better before. Okay, and this is me with my headphones. So how is that? Can you hear me with my headphones? Yes, I am in. Okay, with. Well, someone was telling me they couldn't hear me. Who said that? Waiting to be seen. Okay, so Colombian mammoth skull and tusks, guys. Discovered in Wyoming. Okay, you can hear me, yes, Mo? Okay, discovered in Wyoming in 1960. Wow, look at that, guys. I hope you can hear me. Thanks, everyone watching from home on Apple TV and everyone that stuck around um, to enjoy the walkthrough. You're on a gurney? What? What's happened? Mo, you're not feeling well or what's going on? So this is a Colombian mammoth skull and tusk. So this would be from this Col Colombian mammoth right here. Well, Mo, if you're not feeling well, I hope you're, you're going to get better. I don't know what you're talking about with the gurney. Okay, so let's... Let's pop over here. So here's another kid's exhibit. Can you match the animal to its habitat? So you have to pick up these boards and put them on, on these lit spots, but I'm not gonna do that. You hear bits and pieces. Oh. Mo is in the ER on a gurney. Well, Mo, I hope you're going to be okay. All right, so here we see some skulls of various uh, animals. So a camel. Yes, we wish you the best. Yeah, Mo. A western horse skull. What's this? Oh, that's a cat. Oh, this is the um, horse skull cast. The short faced beer skull cast. 
This is a little cottontail rabbit skull. Look how tiny that is compared to all of those. Dire wolf skull. So we're looking at these right down here. So this short faced bear cast skull is right there. The giant, hey guys, thanks for joining. In my Waco mammoth scope, they also found a camel in the same dig site. Oh, cool. I am definitely having to watch that. Giant ground sloth skull. Oh man. And this is an antelope skull. Wow. <laughs> wow. I didn't really, couldn't, didn't even envision that. So here again, the American mastodon. Humongous sloth. So this is a mastodon. They are shorter and stockier as you see the legs. Definitely, if I pan over here, this is the mammoth, right? Look at the legs, Sweet. tweet out to watch later. All right, thanks Mo, feel better, okay? Bye Mo, take care. So this is the mammoth, Colombian mammoth. You can see the, the height of it, 14 feet high, I believe. And then this is the mastodon. So look how short the legs are. Shorter and stockier, yep. They're cousins. Yeah, the skulls are different, tusks are different, and the teeth are different on these animals. So they're, they're you know, really similar, but not, right? Obviously, that's why it's called a mammoth. It's mammoth. So here, again, we see teeth. Okay, so this is, if I'm not mistaken and I'm not looking, this is the mastodon teeth. Am I right? Yes. 10,000 years ago really isn't that long ago. Well, not when they were around millions of years ago. So this is a mastodon. See how they're cone-shaped molars. And then this is a mammoth. See how flat they are? It tells you what type of food, too, that they would eat because of their... So the Asian elephant molar, 500 years ago to today. Yeah, 10,000, that's right, Les, yeah. And then this is the African... Uh, savanna elephant molar right here so if I can look if we can look back at them like this we've got the African molar closest to me the Asian elephant the mammoth and then the mastodon that's pretty cool Wow crazy Now here, building a house of bones. To build, to build houses, Paleon, Paleolithic people of Eastern Europe first selected mammoth bones according to their size. Skulls, jaws, and other large bones form the foundation. Leg bones form the walls and tusks were used at the entrance or supported the hide covered roof. And they say the bones show no signs of butchering, suggesting that the builders collected the bones from long dead mammoths. That's interesting. If you take the time, there's so much to learn. So in Eastern Europe, scientists excavated ancient houses built on mammoth bones. This model is based on a house found in Ukraine, built sometime between 19,300 and 11,700 years ago. And again, 
they want you to always touch. So that's pretty interesting. I mean, we won't do this. This is another exhibit probably for the kids. What can we learn looking at tusks? Well, again, you can learn a lot through the DNA, what they ate, their age. And here is the mastodon stockier, shorter legs than the mammoth. They have rings like a tree as well. Hmm. So here, um, we'll have to watch it on a replay and pause it to read it. I just don't want to keep you guys. Um, one, okay, so in 2000, paleontologists excavated one of the most complete mastodon skeletons ever found. They named the specimen the Hyde, Hyde Park Mastodon after the town in New York where it was discovered in Hyde Park. What? During six weeks of excavation, researchers helped by thousands of volunteers recovered 95% of the mastodon's bones. The skeleton in this display is a cast of the original. Wow, guys. This is found, this mastodon was found in High Park in New York in 2000. So this is a cast from all the bones that were found from the mastodon. Now, is that not amazing? In High Park. Wow. That's pretty interesting. I'm glad I read that. What can tusks tell us? Okay, so we're looking at a tusk here. Tusks yield a surprising amount of information about the lives of the mastodons and the mammoths. By examining the tusks, scientists can tell us how old an animal was when it died, what time of year the animal died, how healthy and well fed the animal was, and how often and when a mature mate, how often and when a mature male fought. Interesting. So this is from an adult female and has been cut along its length, exposing its layered structure. Each new layer is added just like a tree. Is that what you're meaning, Wes? Uh, the thickness of each layer depends on how well fed the mammoth was during the time the layer was formed. American mastodon tusk, female. Interesting. I find everything interesting. So you can see, can I get over here? I don't know if you can, you can see the rings. Females also have lactation rings. Look at you, Les. <laughs> that is so good. So this was not the exhibit that you went to. Okay, pretty interesting. Okay, so here's another angle for the mastodon. Knocked myself out. Knocked your, knocked what? What are you talking about? Okay, so here are the molars. Please touch again, American mastodon molar. So the molars from the uh, High Park, New York. So there you go. That's a. Um, a woolly mammoth molar on the right and the mastodon molar. So the mastodon molar, 2 million to 10,000 years, and the molar for the mammoth is 700,000 to 3,900 years ago. You knocked yourself out of the scope. That's okay. Oh, we're done. Oh. 
Oh, okay. So here. Great. Okay, guys. So here, hunting mastodons, ribs and toe bones. Well, this is pretty interesting, guys. I mean, we've really gone through a lot of the mastodons. Stone spear points. Now, they're replicas. So they were found 13, five to 13,000 years ago or used in that time period. So these are toes or the joints. So let me just show it to you. The ribs, toes, toe joints. So here's another exhibit that, I mean, I won't go through. How did our ancestors picture their world? They're going to start in a moment picturing mammoths. How did our ancestors picture their world? It's just, I think, restarted itself. So here now what they've gotten into is some of the tools that they've probably found bone shell and stone beads with deer and wolf teeth just saying that yeah mammoths weren't the only animals so and they also found uh, ivory that was carved engravings on ivory which is that that's pretty cool wow different things items that they found which was engraved engraved So yeah, guys, this is a pretty large exhibit. So this is Tusk again. Leg bones. Oh, and look at, here's an exhibit for the kids to play. Look. So you actually get your partner and you, oh, uh, wait, hold on. I guess you just kind of move it around. <laughs> like you just kind of do fight like that. To feel how, yeah, everyone's laughing at me because I, I can't do a good job, right? So look, if I, if I had someone, it, it doesn't allow you to do a whole lot just like that so here a pygmy mammoth so a little one so you can see the size difference in a pygmy mammoth and again the mammoth it does have hair it is showing hair on it And I think this might be coming to the end. Oxymoron. So let's have a look at this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk back over to the main part of the exhibit and conclude there so we can see the, the mammoth and the mastodon for the end. So this is the African safari elephant tusks because people do relate the mammoth and the mastodons to the elephants, and they are part of the family. I'm sure that's Africa with the elephants on the safari. So.
Savannah. So guys, let's walk back through the exhibit. I hope that was enjoyable. If you're watching uh, on replay, thank you for taking the time. And if you've been with me this whole time, awesome. If it's the first time you've been with me, that you've come onto my scope, hit the little guy to the lower right. Follow me, I scope in and around Toronto. Okay, so here is the mastodon that was found in High Park, New York in 2000. So this is the, not the actual one, but from the bones. This is the replica which is different than the mammoth because of the short stocky legs in the mastodon that we know let me turn around so again this mastodon was found in high park in new york you can see how stocky those legs are there are other uh differences the skull and tusks etc and here is the backside of a mastodon of a mammoth and a bear that existed at that time. They were mammoth in size. So here is the mammoth. Pretty amazing. So guys, what I'm gonna do, and here, here's our other fellow scopers right here for the Ontario Science Center. They have fabulous lights. They've got uh, probably an Oli clip. I don't have an Oli clip and I don't have those lights. But the people in the scope probably look fantastic. I'm gonna have to look at that scope after. But guys, I'm gonna leave you on this mammoth 1.6 million to 10 million years ago. Colombian mammoth. This exhibit, again, as I've mentioned, is on loan from the Field Museum in Chicago. The ex exhibit uh, opens tomorrow to the public here in Toronto at Ontario Science Centre and runs till April the 26th. It is called Math uh, Mammoths and Mastodons, Titans of the Ice Age. Thanks, Les. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm going to catch your scope for sure. This was pretty amazing. Guys, thanks a lot for sticking around. And like I said, if you're just joining on the replay, thank you. If you're watching from home, thank you. And if you want to catch the replay, if, you're, if you came in late, you can go to catch.me forward slash Karen Mancini and catch my scopes. Again, if you're not following me, tap the little guy in the lower right corner. Follow me. I scope in and around Toronto. Glad to bring this to you guys. Thanks, Les. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for the hearts. And I will scope with you guys really soon. Take care.